Hey HK fans, James here with another Target of Opportunity video. As you can see, once again, I'm in HK's Gray Room in Columbus, Georgia. Wanted to showcase um, one of their earlier pistol designs. I know that there's a lot of guys out there that are fans of HK, uh, maybe newer fans who aren't as familiar with their legacy pistols. And this is an opportunity to take a, a short glance around the VP70. Now, if you hear that naming uh, convention, VP70, well, you might think about one of their current offerings, the VP9, incredibly popular pistol, and that naming convention's carried over there, and it actually dates back to uh, World War II period. Um, at the end of World War II uh, in Germany, obviously, uh, having a lot of challenges with um, uh, having the raw materials and the production of the high-quality um, pistols that they were producing at that, at that time for military service. Um, and fighting a two-front war made that even more difficult. Uh, so there was a requirement that came down that was pushed out to all the different German manufacturers to create a weapon that was uh, much more cost-effective to produce, took less raw materials, faster and simpler in both production and use. Um, <clears throat> Mauser was one of the companies that produced a... Uh, an example for that contract using stamp steel construction um, and those became known as the Volks pistol or people's pistol because they were intended to be able to arm uh, the homeland uh, defense uh, that was going to be necessary in German, German service to be able to hand a pretty much untrained civilian a handgun um, and, uh, and be able to utilize that. Now, the war ended before those uh, weapons really went into mass production, but here, after the war, we see H&K as a company start up, and about 20 years later, we see a reintroduction from that concept for another Volks pistol. Uh, Germany at the time was divided, literally in half, with East Germany uh, under Warsaw Pact control uh, and West Germany uh, under NATO uh, control and support. Um, and there was always a constant fear that the Russian hordes were going to come pouring over the Fulda Gap and there would be a need to very rapidly arm uh, German citizens with a, uh, a Volks pistol. Uh, so H&K took up this project and created what we know as the VP70, um, again with those same kind of uh, concepts. It had to be very simple uh, and cost-effective to produce and simple to operate. And what we see here is an example of that in the VP-70Z, or Zavillian, as the, the Germans uh, will call it. This is interesting on several levels. First of all, uh, as I discussed here, the VP um, kind of uh, mindset, but also as a real first for H&K. Um, this, you can see, polymer constructed receiver. This is the first... Uh, polymer uh, receiver pistol to be introduced long before all of the the weapons we see now that have polymer receivers uh, the VP70 had it first um, like the original uh, VPs uh, from uh, the World War II era they used stamp steel construction to make the slide uh, rolled in stamp steel welded inserts uh, where needed um, but the receiver itself was made out of polymer um, and that obviously made it uh, much faster to produce that, but also much more cost effective. Now let's look at a few of the uh, unique features of the weapon. First of all, the operating system on this. It's a nine millimeter um, pistol. Most nine millimeter pistols are gonna have some kind of delay system um, imparted in there to control those higher pressure forces. What's unique about um, the VP70 is uh, and a nod to being simplistic, uh, and cost effective, they didn't use a delay system. This is a simple blowback operated weapon. You can see here the, the um, barrel is pinned into the receiver. It is, it is a non-reciprocating barrel, so it doesn't use a tilting, uh, browning short recoil system. It doesn't use a gas retarded delay system like the P7 series that would follow it. It's a, a simple blowback operated weapon. So <clears throat> how did they do that? Well, you've got the mass of the slide itself. You've got the resistance of the uh, recoil spring, um, and then you've got an internal buffer that's right below uh, the barrel as well. Uh, so really unique operating system from a pistol. You don't see very many other nine millimeter pistols that use a uh, simple blowback, but the VP70 did. Other key features as we look at the weapon, obviously what's gonna stand out here from controls, um, you have a simple cross bolt safety. You see red, you're dead, 
push it through for safe, and all that does is simply block the rearward movement of the trigger. Um, the only other real controls you'll see here is a European heel mag release at the base, which was common at the time. There's nothing else really on either side of the weapon, and they did that on purpose. Uh, <clears throat> what you will notice absent here um, is a slide lock or slide release. There is nothing manually on the outside of the weapon. There's absolutely nothing on the inside. So this is a weapon that you have to cycle back manually, either using a power stroke or a slingshot technique in order to load and to reload the weapon again. The absence of a slide lock slide release, again, goes to the simplicity of the weapon system. Um, lack of uh, additional parts. Another unique design feature on here, if we look, it has a traditional rear notch uh, sight, but for simplification and ease of production, you'll notice here at the front, instead of having a small uh, blade sight that you'd have to drift left or right and could be damaged, H&K uh, designed this really unique trough design here in the center with two ramps on either side, basically one machined part off the standard slide where they mill out the trough in the middle, and it gives a uh, kind of a shadow effect that visually looks like a traditional front sight when you look down it, but was much easier to produce and, and didn't have the, uh, the concern of it being damaged. But the other really unique feature um, on the VP70 is the magazine. As we remove this here from the bottom, you'll notice it is a double stack 18 round magazine. Now today in this day and age, you might not think 18 rounds is that impressive. I mean, you buy a VP9, you're going to get it with a 17 round mag. Um, but at this time period, this was absolutely um, a departure from what we've seen. Just about everything else from this time period was a single stack, seven, eight, or nine round magazine. You had to go to the Browning uh, High Power to see a 13 round double stack. 18 rounds was, uh, was really quite something. Um, and the reason for that is twofold. One was because H&K uh, also created a military version of this, the VP-70M, which incorporated a stock to give uh, the user the ability to mount it on to the weapon and now have a three-round burst functionality. Well, if you have three-round burst and you're pulling the trigger on that with an 18-round mag, that meant you had six trigger pulls in order to work that. The other reason for the civilian version was, well, again, you're going to be dropping these or handing these off to uh, civilians who probably have very little training with a handgun. They're not going to have those fundamental accuracy uh, skills that we're going to expect everybody else to. So we're going to want to give them more ammo on board the weapons so they've got more likelihood to, uh, to hit the target uh, when they need to. But a really unique feature on there. The last thing I'll talk about is probably kind of a detriment uh, to the weapon in this day and age from a shooting standpoint, and that's the long, heavy trigger pull that this has. It's actually a striker-fired pistol, um, the first from H&K. Um, but unlike striker-fired pistols that we see now, like uh, the VP9, for example, um, these current designs will use what we consider a single-action striker-fired um, design, where the uh, sear, I'm uh, not the sear, uh, <laughs> sorry, the striker or firing pin is actually pre-cocked and held back to the rear in those pistols, where when I manually cycle the slide to load it or during the eight-step cycle of operation of firing a current production striker-fired gun like a VP9, that sear is already held back to the rear. It is pre-cocked, um, giving you a nice short and light trigger pull because all I'm doing is pulling the trigger bar far enough to release the sear from the striker and it goes off. On the VP70, in again, simplistic standard, you actually have a dual um, action uh, striker fired system where pulling the trigger, you get a long, heavier trigger pull because I'm actually having to cock the striker back to the rear against its own spring pressure and then release it from the sear in order to fire. So generally when people uh, pick up a VP70 now, they go out to the range and shoot it, they say, wow, this trigger pull is longer and heavier than what I would be expecting. Um, but you also have to think about it from the time span that this was developed. At that time in the very early 1970s, um, you know, most of the pistols, unless you were looking at something like a 1911 or a Browning High Power, they were all double action, single action guns. And those long, heavy first trigger pulls uh, were noticeably not as good as what we see uh, nowadays. Um, and you had a lot of people that were using double action revolvers as well with long, heavy trigger pulls. So if you take it from that respect, the trigger's not um, as kind of out of the norm as what we see today. Um, but 
it gives you the opportunity to uh, kind of see what H&K was able to do uh, from that time period. And for me, this is just one that I, I don't think gets really the credit it needs or, or really gets kind of the awareness within the H&K uh, lineup from pistols. But if you understand the backstory, like I've explained here today, as a Volks pistol, what it was intended for, um, and how they were able to create such a simplistic design and use concepts like revolution, revolutionary space age polymer construction on a receiver, introducing striker fired systems. Um, this is a really cool um, pistol from H&K. And if you want to learn more about it, I've got a very detailed review, actually much longer than this, going into all um, the nitinoid information that you might want to learn about the VP70. I will link it uh, below in the description. But as always, I'm humbled to share my knowledge and experience with you guys. If you're looking for H&K service and support or unique training opportunities, give me a shout. That's what I'm here for. Thanks, guys.